Hello, Corner Fringe family. This is Mike Sutcliffe, the online ministries pastor here at Corner Fringe Ministries. And I want to thank you for joining me as we begin the Counting of the Omer 2023. Before we get into the text today, I want to give you a brief overview as to why we would want to count the Omer, besides the fact that it's commanded, right? So a couple of years ago, I ran into a woman who explained something to me. She was a woman of Jewish descent, and she explained what the belief was and why it was important that we count the Omer, and it made a lot of sense to me. So the way she basically said it was that after 400 years in captivity, the children of Israel were so far from God. They had been, their, their, their scriptures had been removed from them. They had been tainted by the culture. They had been fall, led into believing uh, in false gods and trusting in, in everything else. Lord, they had been really, really far from everything that they knew and their identity in who God was. So when God freed them, from Egypt and the bondage of slavery there, and then gave them the, the commandments. There's a window in between these two time periods during which is the 50 days. And what we are doing, according to this lady, and again, it made perfect sense to me, was that we are preparing our hearts to receive Torah. It's this, uh, to me, I almost look at it like it's a season of just uh, more cleaning out the cupboards, right? It's how do we get rid of all the, the things that we're tainted with, the worldly things, the false doctrines that we've been exposed to, the injuries and wounds of our childhood and past memories, some of our unbelief. There's so many things we could go down this path. So as we study this pa these passages for the next 50 days together, I want to encourage you to think that that's the motive here. It's not about just studying God's Word. It is literally, we're going to study Psalm 119 and a couple other passages, but we're going to study them so that we're ready to receive God's Torah. What a beautiful way, for me anyways, to look at what's going on this, uh, this season of the Counting of the Omer 2023. All right, so each day I'm going to send you a video here on the app, and I hope that you will uh, give me some thoughts. Share it with me. You can send me a message at Mike at cornerfringe.com. You can join us at Online Fellow Fringers and talk about it. Um, and then I'd love to hear what you're learning. I'm not going to give you all the answers. I want to walk with you and hopefully get you to dig into the word for yourself. So we're going to study today eight verses, Psalm 119, one through eight, and we're going to go through it pretty quickly here. I want to read it for you so that you understand it, and uh, and then we can you can just get in the process. Wouldn't it be awesome if we memorized this by the end of the, the 50-day window? Um, all right, so Psalm 119, one through eight says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who comply with his testimonies and seek him with all their heart. They also do no injustice. They walk in his ways. You have ordained your precepts that we are to keep them diligently. Oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes. Then I will not be ashamed when I look at all your commandments. I will give thanks to you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly abandon me. Wow, this is, when I, when I read Psalm 119, 1 through 8, I see a whole lot of action here. I see that it's not uh, just hearing God's word, but it's literally walking it out. Maybe that's the place to begin today. You know, the idea of walking or walking after communicates a lifestyle. This is not something that we are to do once and done. This is supposed to be the way we live our lives. You know, I, I, I remember once hearing a description of, uh, it was about when a disciple would walk behind his rabbi, he would walk so closely, walking in the same way, that the dust from the sandals of the rabbi would cover the clothing of the disciple behind him. That is how closely you and I are to walk behind Messiah. We are to walk in the very same steps that he has walked in. And if anyone believes that he would walk in any way counter to God's word, then they don't know who Yeshua is. All right. So as you're looking at today's devotion, I want you to look at a couple of words. 
The first one is blessed. When we open up this first passage here, the word that we jump out at us is blessed are those whose way is blameless. But have you ever wondered what the word blessed means? And this word, this word is ashri in Hebrew, and it means happy or fortunate. And the, the psalmist is using this word to describe the person who follows God's laws and walks in his ways. You ever wonder why you're not happy? You ever wonder why you, you aren't feeling the fortune? I'm not talking about financial prosperity. I'm talking about the presence of God in your life. It's because you're not walking in his ways. And so he's telling us here in the very first verse of this psalm, blessed are those, happy are those, fortunate are those whose way is blameless. We are walking in the way of the Lord. All right, the next word that I want to call out to you today is observe, right? And when it says this word here, we're looking at the word where, it's, where it comes down here that um, I'm trying to find. <laughs> look at that. I can't find all my notes. Um, my, my verse here says, and how blessed are those who observe his testimonies. Well, there's two words we're going to look at, observe and testimony. All right, so observe is shamar, and it means to keep to guard or to watch over, all right? This uh, this psalmist here is the act of, uh, he's describing the act of obeying God's commands and keeping them close to our heart, right? Keeping and keeping them close to our heart. These are treasures. Every word from the Lord is a treasure. And what is a testimony? Well, a testimony means a witness or evidence. And what we can learn from this particular passage is that the word here refers to that God's law is a testimony to his character and his relationship with his people. What a great way for us to look at this. So when it says here we are to observe his testimonies, we are literally to guard and protect his laws because they tell us about his character and his great love for all of his people. What might be another word? Well, there's two more words I want to give you today. Uh, well, I'll give you three. And the, 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 the next one is probably my, when we study Psalm 119, I'm going to ask you to just kind of pay very close attention to this word. The word is precept. And every time I see the word precept, I think of the term underlying principle. What is the purpose of all of God's laws? So when you see the precept of the law, what is God trying to communicate? The answer is pretty simple. It's love. God always is trying to love us with his laws. It's a way to correct us, to reprove us, to draw us back, to equip us. God loves us through his law, and we show our great love for him in the same way. All right, this next word that we're going to look at is keep, and the word here for is natsar. It's, a, it's very close to this other word we talked about and observed. Both of them mean to guard, to preserve, or to watch over. In this case, though, what we're talking about when it says to keep, it's to make sure that they do not become corrupted. Going back to Daniel's message on the, the name of the Lord in the, in the Ten Commandments series, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Keeping the Lord's name, in, in, uh, and in this particular case, from going corrupt is about walking like Christ so that the world doesn't see a corrupted image of who God is. So that's what we're talking about when we read this. And then the last word here is learn, and it means it's lamad in Hebrew, right? And it means to be taught or to instruct. Right? This process is being described as the way we gain wisdom and understanding through God's law is to focus and meditate on everything that he teaches us. So as you read Psalm 119 today and you're beginning to this journey of counting the Omer, think about what these words mean. Blessed, observe, testimonies, precepts, keep, and learn. Well, friends, I promise you I keep it between five and ten minutes each day. And so I hope that this message blessed you. And I look forward to hearing what God says to you in Psalm 119, 1 through 8. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue counting the Omer. Shalom.